Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. In today's Mass, we are very privileged to be able to celebrate with the Kovo family the confirmation of their children, Abraham and Victoria. Welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the living. For he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them, and the dominium of Hades is not on earth. For righteousness is immortal, for God created man for incorruption and made him in the image of his own eternity. And through the devil's envy, that entered the world, and those who belong in his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, and though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. 
I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it, it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came and, when he saw Jesus, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion 
people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then Jesus put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about, for she was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I would like to speak to you just a little bit about superstition. Over more than 40 years of ministry, I've noticed that people who suffer from a serious or an incurable illness can often become so desperate that they will try absolutely anything. The media sometimes report desperately ill people journeying to Southeast Asia or to some other country in search of a strange and unproven medical treatment or a strange religious ritual that is not available to them at home. Well, the woman in today's gospel who had suffered hemorrhages for 12 years, she is just that desperate. She had endured a great deal at the hands of many doctors, Mark tells us. She had spent all the money she had, and yet she had not been helped. She only grew worse. Now she comes to Jesus as a last resort. After so many other bitter disappointments, she hardly dares hope for a cure. But then again, she probably thinks, what do I have to lose? And her situation is even more serious than we might realize, because according to the Hebrew religious law of the day, this woman, her illness makes her ritually unclean. Like lepers, 2,000 years ago, she is excluded from all normal society. Anyone who even touches her becomes unclean and is defiled. And so by mixing with the crowd and by trying to touch Jesus, she is deliberately violating this religious quarantine, which I think is a measure of her desperation. If I but touch his clothes, she tells herself, I will be made well. But notice this, please. Her real interest is not in Jesus as a person. It is only in his supposed power. So what at first might look like faith is actually closer to superstition. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls superstition, and I quote, a perverse excess of religion. When one attributes an importance in some way magical to certain practices, to attribute the efficacy of prayers or of sacramental signs to their mere external performance, Apart from the interior disposition they demand, this is to fall into superstition. End of quote. Here's a modern example of this perverse excess of religion 
that the Catechism condemns. Every so often, pastors of Catholic parishes may find in their churches copies of a supposed Novena prayer containing the instruction to say it every day for nine days and then to leave copies of it on the pews in nine different churches. And then it promises you are guaranteed, guaranteed to get whatever you have prayed for. Now that might look a bit like faith, but in reality, that is superstition. Because you see, and this is critical, faith is trust in a person, not in some practice. Faith is trust in a person. Superstition is reliance on a power which, if not handled correctly, can even become harmful, which is why superstition always contains some element of fear, which explains, I think, this woman's fear when Jesus turns in the crowd and says, who has touched my clothes? Realizing what was about to happen to her, Mark tells us the woman came in fear and in trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. That being that she had violated this strict law of quarantine. But notice please how Jesus treats this poor woman. Instead of scolding her, he encourages her. Realizing her desperation, Jesus judges the woman's actions far more generously than perhaps they actually deserve. For this poor, frightened soul, huddled at his feet in fear, Jesus speaks words of reassurance. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. You see, by treating the woman as if she had faith, when in reality she had little more than superstition, Jesus plants the seed of a true and a living faith within her. Fear shrinks from encountering the thing or the person who is feared. Just as this woman shrinks from Jesus, once he senses that she has violated the law of quarantine. Faith, however, faith seeks to reach out. Faith seeks to encounter the object of one's faith. As long as this woman is motivated only by superstition, she must try to keep her encounter with the Lord a secret because of the fear that comes from this superstitious belief. But Jesus, as we have seen, invites her to move beyond her superstition, to move towards a true and a living faith. And we know that faith, like love, casts out all fear. So, what do you fear? Because we all fear something. My friends, Jesus Christ is inviting you to move beyond your fear and to move toward a real and a living faith in him. And when you do, you will open the door to him who is able to do in you and through you not merely the unexpected, not merely the improbable or the difficult, but even perhaps the impossible. Just remember, always to end your prayer of faith with the words of Jesus himself, as he prayed to his heavenly Father, not my will, but thy will be done.
Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, having heard the words of everlasting life, let us bring our needs to God in this our common prayer. That Almighty God will bless <clears throat> the Church ministers with joy in their service of the Gospel and give them continued strength to serve God's holy people, we pray to the Lord. That Almighty God will abundantly bless the life and ministry of Father Patrick Paul and Father P Peter Robinson, who were ordained to the priesthood for the Diocese of Hamilton yesterday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Th that the people of Canada, as we celebrate Canada Day this coming week, may work together to build a society that promotes peace and justice for all, especially with the indigenous people of Canada. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all victims of violence, hatred, and bigotry may know the love of God and that issues of injustice currently plaguing our society may be resolved with respect and mutual understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of those children who died at residential schools may live with God forever in heaven, that their families and communities may have comfort and peace and that the Church of Canada may walk the road of reconciliation and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, Almighty God will continue to guide all people safely to the end of the COVID pandemic and to a brighter future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Christ may give comfort and healing to all those who are suffering, especially Diane Lipke and any sick members of our parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all faithful departed, especially the deceased members of our parish family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us bring these petitions and those which remain in the silence of our hearts to the throne of Almighty God through the intercession of our Blessed Lady as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. accomplish the effects of your mysteries. Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion today, the minister will go to either of the side altars. For those of you who are in the side sections, I will come immediately to the center, so both the center sections and the side sections can come at the same time. Please just be careful in the side aisles to observe the proper distancing if you're not from the same household. body of Christ.
sacrifice we have offered and received. Fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Next Saturday will be our second Marian Day. The Marian Days in our diocese are days of devotion to Our Lady, held on the first Saturdays of June, July, August, September, and October. The June Day was uh, virtual because the churches were closed at the time. But next Saturday is the uh, first Saturday of July. And uh, because of COVID restrictions, it's a little different format. It's actually going to be more of a Marian morning than a Marian day, but uh, please do come. There will be confessions from 8.30 to 9.30. His Excellency Bishop Lobsinger will celebrate Mass and preach the homily at 10 o'clock. And then at 11, there will be a holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament with the Rosary and Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the morning will close at noon with the Angelus and Benediction. You are all very welcome. And by next Saturday, we will have gone into stage two in the province, which means that we will be allowed 250 people here in the Basilica. Canada, uh, Canada Day is coming up this Thursday, as you know, and the bishops of Canada have asked Catholics from across the country to pray an act of entrustment to commit our country to the care of our patron, St. Joseph, on Canada Day. We have here in the parish begun a novena to St. Joseph leading up to the act of entrustment. Uh, so Mass on Canada Day will be at 9 o'clock. You are all very welcome to come and pray for our country and to entrust her to St. Joseph. Any of you who would like to pray today's novena prayer, please just gather over by the St. Joseph altar after Mass and we will pray the novena prayer together. And uh, in preparation for our nation's birthday, please join in singing our national anthem. Holy Spirit, go in peace.